Unfortunately, we've run out of time. It's now time for me I know it's now time for member statements. I recognize the member for Whitby. Well, thank you, Speaker. <laughs> Lakeridge Health is teamed with Ontario Tech University in the region of Durham to drive healthcare innovation and address Durham region's evolving healthcare needs using artificial intelligence. The Partnership for Advanced Technology in Healthcare seeks to enhance patient care and improve health outcomes for the region of Durham through the sharing of cutting edge research with practical applications. This new partnership further reinforces Lake Ridge Health's dedication to integrating technology that benefits both patients and healthcare providers. Importantly, the university's new collaboration with Lake Ridge Health provides a unique learning opportunity for Ontario Tech students. A new generation, Speaker, of leaders in healthcare and technology as they work to uncover A1 solutions that will improve health care services across the region. Collaborations with exceptional academic institutions like Ontario Tech are key to building a health care system that not only serves today's needs, but anticipates the health care challenges of tomorrow. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for London North Centre. Speaker. This government is struggling to deliver on the basics like affordable housing, health care, and education. So instead of doing that, they're, instead of fixing what they've broken, they're peddling distractions. First, the fantasy $1 billion tunnel under the 401, and now bulldozing over municipalities by announcing new legislation to destroy bike lanes. Speaker, it reminds me of one of the first culture wars from this government, ripping out EV charging stations. This government doesn't care about financial or ecological costs. Why would you spend money destroying existing infrastructure? You're making taxpayers foot the bill for your destructive agenda. The Association of Municipalities of Ontario says, and I quote, requiring provincial approval for bike lanes would be a significant overreach into municipal jurisdiction. Municipal planners work hard. The community has been engaged, but once again, this government is making decisions without the proper process, just like closing the Ontario Science Centre overnight due to supposedly unsafe roof panels when one in 12 schools in Ontario have the same roof panels. This government refuses to fix their mistakes, like selling off the 407 in the first place, but also handing over a billion dollars to the 407's owners during the pandemic. Conservatives pretend bikes are the problem. Wasteful conservative ideology is the problem. Premier, stay in your own lane and quit acting out your petty grudges from your time on Toronto City Council. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Order. Member statements. Order. Member statements. The member for Windsor Tecumseh. Hey. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, I rise uh, today as it is once again the time to roll out the red carpet for a beloved part of the Windsor Essex community fabric, the Windsor International Film Festival. Now, WIF is celebrating 20 years strong this year. And starting tomorrow night, and I'm looking forward to being there as soon as the legislature is done, it will be delivering the biggest lineup of feature films yet. Now, by the numbers, it's 213 feature films, 42 countries represented, 23 local films, 58 francophone feature films, 46 films selected from the Toronto International Film Festival, 141 films from world leading film festivals, and 75 feature documentaries. I've already got my tickets for the longest film of the festival, celebrating the tragically hip, no dress rehearsal, clocking in at 261 minutes. But the heart and soul of the Winter International Film Festival is Vincent Georgi, the executive director of the festival. Vincent began as a volunteer for the festival in 2009 and has served as executive director and chief programmer since 2013, so 11 years now. Year after year, Vincent and the WIF team deliver an incredible event that not only brings visitors to our community, but a veritable experience like no other that comes right here close to home back in Windsor Essex. So thank you to Vincent, thank you for the entire WIF board and the team for your incredible work delivering the festival once again. You're making Windsor Essex incredibly proud. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Kiwetanong. Miigwech, Speaker. I'm going to say bye. 130 members of Red Rock Indian Band 
and their supporters brought traffic to a halt between Eastern and Western Canada at the Nipigon Bridge for an hour on Monday. This peaceful uh, highway shutdown followed the discovery of human remains at the construction site for a new visitor center in Nipigon. One of the uh, four ancestors whose remains were uncovered in, in May was from pre-contact and they were found in their original burial place. But the remains are incomplete. Red Rock Chief Alan Odawa Jr. stated that Parks Canada failed to follow its own protocols by not having an archaeologist on site. And both the federal and the provincial governments were hindering the search for the remains. Instead of treating the remains with respect, around 150 loads of earth were re re relocated. And some of those remains are in those 150 loads of earth. The Red Rock Indian Band continues to call on the federal, provincial, and private, sector, private sectors, private actors, to stop being an obstacle in their search for their ancestors and to prevent this from happening in the future. They are asking for policy change so this does not happen again. Miigwech to uh, Red Rock Indian Band and supporters for your advocacy and solidarity. Miigwech. Glinton Lawrence. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to address the disturbing Toronto District School Board 15 school field trip turn protest featuring anti-Israel chants and Zionism kill stickers that occurred on September 18th of this year. Students were instructed to dress as settlers in blue shirts and to chant from Turtle Island to Palestine, occupation is a crime. As Brian Lilly of The Sun wrote, that chant pushed on students as young as grade three, not only dragged the war Hamas started into the rally that was supposed to be about clean water, it pushed a Marxist ideology onto students. Education is not a tool for indoctrination. It should not be used to further political agendas or to impose one-sided views. Our educators have a responsibility to nurture the minds of future generations and encourage them to think for themselves. As this government has made clear, students deserve an education that focuses on the fundamentals like reading, writing, and math, not one that diverts precious time away from classroom learning in favour of political activism. Mr. Speaker, our government takes this matter very seriously because we know that parents send their children to school to learn and not to be used as crowd extras or fillers by activists posing as teachers. The Premier noted that teachers should stick to teaching, and the Minister has now ordered an investigation into how this happened. And I look forward to the findings of that investigation and will always stand for a back-to-basic education that focuses on nurturing each individual student's success. Thank you. Well Thank you. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Humber River, Black Creek. Speaker, things built in the past were made to last, but not anymore. Nowadays, manufacturers want the things you buy from them to break down a day after the warranty ends. Hey, but no problem, right? They'll just sell you their latest model that comes in a new flashy color. Wow. You still want to keep it, though. No problem. They'll fix it for you at double the cost of buying another one. So, hey, why don't you just buy another one and throw yours in the garbage and add it to the growing pile? Okay, so you're having none of it. You want to repair it yourself or maybe go to the local repair shop and get Fred to fix it at a cheap cost. Well, that's when the company mascot goes from the cute little puppy to the angry wolf. That's the last place they want you to go, and they have many strategies to stop you. Speaker, in our smart world of glued-on batteries, digital locks, and products designed for the dump, it's time to take a stand. We deserve the right to repair our own stuff we paid for at a fair cost, and my Bill 187 will make it happen. I urge the government to support it. The right to repair movement is strong and growing. To learn more about it, Come out to the first ever Canadian Repair Convention this Friday, October 25th, in London, Ontario, at the Ivy Spencer Leadership Centre, or join online at canrepair.ca. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Markham, Unionville. Thank you, Speaker. 
Last week, I had the pleasure of hosting a Thanksgiving celebration at the Angus Glen Community Center in Markham, Unionville. It was a heartwarming event with vibrant performances from 12 senior clubs and a full house of local residents, all coming together in the spirit of community. We were also honored to have Premier Ford and Minister Lakshev joined us, making the occasion even more special. The celebration truly reflects the spirit of Thanksgiving, bringing people from all walks of life together to celebrate community, diversity, and gratitude. It reminds us of the importance of staying connected, supporting one another, and fostering a sense, a sense of belongings in our ever-growing and diverse community. Our community thrives because of the dedication and cooperation of the residents who continuously work to build a welcoming and inclusive environment for everyone. I would like to extend my heartfelt thanks to all the performers, volunteers, and attendees for their contributions in making this event such a resounding success. Together, we create moments of togetherness, abundance, joy, and lasting memories for everyone. Ontario is stronger and more united when we value community and celebrate our shared traditions through events like this. From the bottom of my heart, big thank you to my neighbours and friends. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Algoma, Manitoulin. Thank you, Speaker. Over the summer recess, I had the opportunity to travel back and forth across my riding, meeting with people in every corner of Algoma, Manitoulin. I tried to use the extra six weeks that we were away to get in as many events, meetings, and constituency clinics as possible. The government also tried to make the most of the extended recess, outlining their agenda while avoiding scrutiny here at the legislature. However, the priorities that they broadcasted into the headlines were very different from what I was hearing from people in Algoma, Manitoulin. The Premier's prior priority was spending $225 million to put alcohol into convenience stores, while hospitals in my writing were looking at how they were going to avoid million-dollar deficits under this government's budget. The government prioritized billion-dollar mega-highways in the GTA, while in the north, we've been waiting over a decade for the government to finish four-laning Highway 69 to Sudbury. The Premier announced that he wanted to spend billions to tunnel under the 401 and add more lanes. While on Manitoulin Island, people were stuck waiting for hours at a broken down swing bridge that the government hasn't put a timeline on to replace. Close to $7 billion in payback for the government's unconstitu unconstitutional Bill 124. Meanwhile, children with autism are left on a wait list for services which continue to grow longer each year. Speaker, I can safely say that what this government chose to spend the summer focusing on does not match the priorities of the people I spoke with in Algoma, Manitoulin. Thank you very much. The next member statement, the member for Lambton, Kent, Middlesex. Speaker. I rise today to share an exciting achievement in my riding of the Lambton Kent Middlesex. Recently, we celebrated the grand opening of Norvik's state of the art manufacturing plant in Strathroy, marking a significant step forward for our community and for Ontario. This $45 million investment is not just a privilege for our local economy, but a strong testament to our government's work in strengthening Ontario's manufacturing structure. This new facility, Norbeck's first in Ontario, third in Canada, will create 70 high-skilled jobs, full-time jobs providing opportunities for engineers, production operators, and many others. We are proud to have the support of our government, which contributed $1.5 million through the Regional Development Program. This facility will not only help Norbeck better serve its customers, here in Ontario, but also tap into the growing Midwest U.S. markets. Mr. Speaker, this is more than just a new factory. It is a symbol of growth, innovation, and the opportunities that lie ahead for our region. I look forward to seeing the great impact this facility will have and look ahead to its clear. This investment will boost with our local economy the Ontario's position as a manufacturing leader. Here's to a bright future for Strathroy, Norbeck, and all of Ontario. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. The next member's statement, the member for Perth Wellington. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, I had a very busy summer and early fall in my beautiful riding of Perth Wellington. I attended over 260 events and meetings, and it was great to be able to meet with the hardworking people across my riding, the ones who are helping us build, feed, and create a pro prosperous Ontario. And I had the opportunity to make many announcement as announcements as our government continues to build a better, stronger, and safer Ontario. Whether it was the $14.2 million to the Ontario Community Infrastructure Fund, which provides money to our municipal partners to build roads, bridges, sewers that we rely on, or the $1.3 million to train the next generation of municipal equipment operators through the Skills Development Fund, or the $307,000 for the Rural Economic Development Projects across Perth Wellington or the $8.3 million or, and $14 million for the land ambulance and the dedicated offload nurses programs in Perth and Wellington County, respectively, or the four, $34 million for broadband and high-speed internet expansion across southwestern Ontario. And there's more, Speaker, or the $1.39 million through the Southwest Development Fund for Summers Generators in Stratford to help them build hydrogen generators in Ontario, creating good paying jobs locally. And these are only some of the investments our progressive Conservative government is making in communities across Perth Wellington. I look forward to working with all my colleagues in this place to continue to invest in health care, infrastructure, economic development, and keep taxes low for the people of Ontario. Thank you. Thank you very much. That concludes our member statements for this morning.